and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. And as you can see today, I'm the treasure. I'm the trash. Before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking the Dinu Pass. <laughs> it is an old ale. Today, in celebration of our season six, our first trash or treasure of the season will be Friday the 13th part six, Jason Lives. <laughs> it's really kind of beloved amongst the fans. That's right. But it's also very flawed too. Written and directed by Tom McLaughlin. 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 <laughs> Tom Matthews is in this, and he was in uh, Return of the Living Dead parts one and two. There's bodies in there? <laughs> Jason Lives starts off with Tommy Jarvis and his buddy Hawes. Alan Hawes. <laughs> Hawes! If you remember from the previous two movies, Tommy Jarvis has had battles with Jason twice before. And it has affected his mental health so much so he was in a mental institution. Decided to go make sure Jason is actually dead which is a very stupid thing to do because he's in the ground, he's not bugging anybody. Yeah, exactly. And for some reason, they brought his mask along. Yeah. Like, why? And of course, he's got like a nice tombstone that just says <laughs> Jason Voorhees. You think they would have spent that much money on this mass murderer's tombstone? Like, those things are expensive. Cremate him and be done with it. Dig up the grave and they open the casket and Jason's there, but he's dead. Mm -hmm. So good, okay, you've done your job, you verified he's dead, but no, they have to take it one step further, he needs to get a bit of revenge, he takes his big metal pole, sticks it in Jason, to stick it to him one last time. It's a stormy night, and lightning hits the pole! It twice! <laughs> bringing Jason back to life! Not only does it bring him back to life, but it rejuvenates his flesh and everything now he's no longer a skeleton he's like a muscular and he's strong first order of business well you gotta kill somebody right <laughs> so he kills off tommy's buddy alan jason should be eternally grateful yeah you guys brought me back to life thanks yeah thank you i'll leave you two alone exactly. and go kill somebody else tommy gets in his truck and basically freaks out and drives to the closest town to go notify the sheriff well, of course, this sounds like a bunch of damn baloney. The sheriff doesn't believe him, but his daughter kind of takes a bit of a liking to Tommy. Why? I don't know. He sounds like a fucking maniac. <laughs> In the meantime, Camp Crystal Lake has been renamed Forest Green, and of course, they're reopening, and there's a <laughs> bunch of very young children that are now attending. And of course, there's a bunch of teen counselors. Get introduced to the grave digger, Martin. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Shit, damn. They didn't even put the slimy sucker back in right. There's all <laughs> drinking out of that flask. Puts the dirt back onto the grave so it looks like nothing's really happened. Tommy Jarvis leads the cops back to the graveyard to see that the grave is open and that Jason is gone, but it's covered back over. So they just basically tell him to get the fuck out of town. Don't come back. Jason now is starting his return back to Camp Crystal Lake or Forest Green. He's all strong yeah. and tight. Yeah, there's, there's close-ups of his ass. He's all tight and muscular and everything. And he gets like a pretty snazzy tool belt with a bunch of chisels and so shit in. Brand new and... And he gets those snazzy gloves. And he fucking just wreaks havoc on his journey. Tommy gets thrown back in jail. The cops figure that it's actually Tommy doing the killing to convince everybody. But his daughter's got the hots for him, and she ends up breaking him out. Tommy's got a plan to put Jason down for good. If you want to watch the rest of the movie, what happens? Continue watching Friday the 13th Part 6. Is it trash or treasure? Let's start off by listing the treasure of this movie. First golden nugget <laughs> really is that, well, Jason is back. Yeah. If you remember from part five, it actually wasn't Jason doing the killing in that movie. It was an imposter because everyone was so pissed off about it not being Jason in the last movie. Right. They brought him back for this one in a big way. This movie is a clear crossroads in the whole series. It's sort of fresh, it's new. As a horror comedy, it does work, and that's the movie they set out to make. The, the director said, I'm gonna make a horror comedy. Even though some of the previous movies did have a bit of comedy in it, you know, like part three is pretty campy and cheesy, this one is the first one that's blatantly trying to be funny, I think. It's not funny because it's bad, it's funny because it's supposed to be. We kind of tore down Dream Warriors a bit last year. The franchise is at that crossroads where it goes from horror to comedy, but in this case, it was intentional. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that 
Dream Warriors was intentionally trying to be campy and make Freddy a joke. In this case, Jason is still not a joke. He is serious. It's every, it's the situation. Everything else around him is the silliness. Another treasure about this movie is the kill count. It's huge in yeah. this. Huge at 18 kills. He kills three at once, just with the one Shh. with the one swipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like holy. Another great kill, which is again leans towards the more ridiculous side when he takes that woman's face and puts yeah. it through that steel wall, and you can see it. <laughs> the one counselor that he kills too, he all twists her head all the way around, and then the head is all gone after <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's carrying yeah. her. <laughs> He's really obsessed with taking people's heads off in this movie. He crushes that cop's yeah. head. Ah! And one of the best kills, one of my favorite kills <laughs> of the whole series, is the sheriff, where he just folds him right in half. <laughs> he can't even be bothered to actually kill him in a cool way. He just pushes him down in half. <laughs> The chisel in the cop's head, too, from across the lake. Yeah. <laughs> He's got Man. good aim for somebody oh who's God. just been alive for a couple of hours here. One of the treasure parts about this movie, too, is the pacing. You're never bored. Even though the movie can get silly or whatever, you're never, ever bored, and it it moves along quickly. The atmosphere and a lot of the, the, the lighting and the fog is great in this movie, and you can really tell that the director was inspired by the old Universal horror movies like like The Wolfman, right. all the, the shots in the forest with the fog and the trees, and the whole Frankenstein thing, the lightning, <laughs> right. and reviving the dead corpse. Like he said in interviews, yeah, I was going for trying to make Jason Voorhees like a Universal monster. Right. And it worked. It's that, successful. It worked very well. I like how... Tommy basically fucks everything up. Yeah, he doesn't get anything right. <laughs> no, and all he wanted to do was make sure that he was dead. He ends up bringing him back forever, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he turned him into an undying zombie. <laughs> Who's super strong and can't be killed. Another piece of treasure about this movie is the Alice Cooper song, The Man Behind the Mask. Right. He's back. Final showdown between Tommy and Jason on the water. Yeah. It's it's a pretty cool setting, right? Yeah. And then they got, like, he puts the gas in the water around the boat. And, like, all these flames. It's pretty epic. And you also don't know where Jason's going to pop up. You're actually on the edge of your seat watching it. Which brings us to the trash about this movie. What is bad about... Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. The fact that there's no plot, really. No substance to the movie. Not really. Besides Tommy wanting to make sure Jason's dead, there's no underlying subplot to keep you interested. Pretty one-dimensional. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, even the characters are one-dimensional. They're forgettable. You don't yeah. really care too much about them. Caretaker Martin is always stuck out. Yeah. But besides him, even Tommy, as much as I love Tom Matthews in Return of the Living Dead, mm -hmm. I don't really like him so much as Tommy because he doesn't play Tommy the way Tommy is supposed to be. Like yeah. in the last movie, he was all quiet and traumatized but badass. In this, he's just like a loudmouth idiot. The acting isn't all that great either, yeah. right? You gotta listen to me! Like, it's all <laughs> cheap, kind of. Jason's lying! <laughs> it could have been a treasure if they would have elaborated on it a bit more, was how Tommy tries to kill Jason and bring him back to his original resting place. Suddenly you see all these occult books on the in the car. What did you learn from these occult books? And how did you get all these occult books at like Sleep. super late at night in this <laughs> small town happens to have a whole occult section in the bookstore? Yeah. I know how to kill Jason now. Yeah. Take him back to his original resting. Well, how do you know all this? <laughs> yeah. And what does that have to do with the occult? The treasure was the fact that they took it in a different direction, right? Comedy. The trash aspect of it is that it's <laughs> too silly. It throws the guy into the tree and leaves a happy <laughs> face. That is a little too much. Yeah. That's verging on stupid exactly. and not funny. Stuff that Martin says is silly. Yeah. It is funny. It's funny. Does <laughs> he think I'm a fart head? If you're trying yeah. to go for a horror movie here, come on. Yeah! The whole typical woman having sex in the RV and it's like listening to the music like, and like who like rocking out like <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh yeah! <laughs> You're the best! You're the best! Like, who does that? Like, I don't know, only in the 80s. Only in the know? 80s. Now they're not getting anything from the guy, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, you know? Just from the music. <laughs> that's right. That's that's what's doing it for. Woo! <laughs> One part that's really too silly is that whole paintball scene. Yeah. With the music, it's got that goofy do, 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 music, do, do, like, yeah. and they're all that <gasps> shitty army music. Yeah, and that stuff. shitty army music, and they're all serious. Like, ah, oh, come on, like it. It could have did without that entire yeah. scene. Also, kind of neat how the director brought in all these really small children. For the reason he said to up the stakes yeah. you know well there's never been really small kids at the camp and jason's coming but it doesn't really up the stakes as much as it should because you never really buy into the fact that jason might kill one of them you never really yeah. believe it they don't get you to that point like oh jason's gonna kill a child he has every opportunity to do it and he doesn't do it which leads you to think that Jason has a bit of a conscience and he yeah. doesn't want to kill kids. Which takes away from Jason's scariness. Exactly. Jason is not really scary so much. There's that one scene, you know, where he's looking mm -hmm. over the kid where he's like, oh, that's creepy. But other than that, he's just some muscular guy yeah. walking around. Like, he's not scary. Like, they show him too much, you know, where it's like you're, you're desensitized. Horror comedy is a balancing act, right? To balance the horror and the comedy. This one almost gets it perfect, but I think the silliness kind of weighs the scales a little bit too much. Yeah. Where it gets a little too silly. It's not quite a perfect horror comedy. Almost perfect. Yeah. It almost got it right, but there's a couple of scenes where you tip it over the edge. Exactly. Jason lives. Trash or treasure? It is treasure. I'd have to say treasure too. And it's funny because my opinion on this kind of changes from time to time. Yeah. You know, when we were kids, this is always one of my favorites because it's so fun and stupid and silly but then over time as you start to appreciate like ones like part two mm -hmm. more as horror movies you start to not like this one so much because it's too silly from this movie you see where the uh, the series goes yeah and then it's, it's like really uh, silly yeah and it's yeah. like oh man I really wish that they hadn't have done yeah. this but as a standalone horror comedy it's treasure yeah it's always an enjoyable watch <laughs> exactly you know, even though it's stupid and silly it's enjoyable and it's probably the last really good Friday the 13th movie I'd pretty say. much and yeah. it has John Carpenter in it so hey <laughs> yeah. you can't go wrong not only do they have a John Carpenter look-alike <laughs> the, town. the town is named Carpenter <laughs> yeah. So, let us know what you think about Jason Lives, trash or treasure. I'm sure most people say it's treasure, oh, yeah. but it definitely has trash elements. And until next time, keep drinking. Gotta listen to me!